Hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Chuck, and we are checking out Asnot versus Ukiora Cipher. Now, we all know Ukiora, he is the really cool Sparta dude, but uh, Asnot is one of the first uh, Quincy's that's dressed up in a gimp suit looking thing at the start of Thousand Year Blood War arc, I do believe. And if I'm just going to go off of basic shonen creeping power level systems, as the story progresses, I'm just gonna go on a random whim here and say that I think Asnot wins this just because of where he's based within the story. I know that sounds so stupid, but as Shonen's progress, the enemies have to get stronger because the end, the, the, the protagonists get stronger. Um, but there's probably more to it than that. Let's uh, let's go into the actual abilities and his fighting styles and uh, all the zeros and Quincy abilities and everything these guys have and. Uh, See what Chuck has to say, shall we? In the anime series called Clorox <laughs> Bleach, we have seen the Soul Reapers time and time again go up against really powerful and cunning opponents. From the Trollmaster Cherusama Aizen yep. to the overpowered and heavily broken you watch to the two characters that we're going to be covering in this video. The nihilistic and edgy Ukiora he is and so the fear-inducing, Yakuya-killing as not. By the way, I'm trying to pronounce it as ass not, not ass not, but you really can't unhear it either way, so yeah. whatever. The whole point is, if these two were to face off against each other, who would come out on top? Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? The main reason that I wanted to make this battle is because, I mean, one, not only is it spooky boy season with Halloween and all, <laughs> all but right. Kiora and Asnot are like two of my most favorite characters in their respective armies. Oh, okay. Not to mention that they also have some kind of antithesis to their own beliefs and personifications. Because Ukiora is supposed to be nihilism, he is nothingness, he is supposed to not feel any emotion, yeah. or feel any sympathy for anyone, and that really, fundamentally, <laughs> nothing matters. Except in the case of Halo Reach coming to the MCC, which honestly does matter. A lot. That's On happened, the other hand, Asnot <laughs> saw his whole purpose as being to serve the Almighty, and he saw fear as a vital tool to showcase that Shinigami, Espada, the Quincy's, or any living thing can be consumed by fear. By fear. Right. And even if it doesn't affect them on an emotional level, it will definitely affect them on an instinctual level. Because fear is something that we can never really escape from because it is in our nature. Before I discuss their abilities and power, I do want to make it very clear that in this battle I will not be using Ukiora from his battle with Bastel Lord Ichigo, no. because let's be real here, Asnot would be able to very easily abuse and just slap the hell out so of what him are you using, nothing. Though? And it is very easy to see that through scaling and common sense, yeah. and I'll explain to you really quickly as to why that is. Now, the information that I'm going to tell you guys is something that so some confused. people really don't want to accept because, I mean, most of them really just, like, read the manga or just watch the anime. Nothing wrong with that, but if you want to get a more fundamental, like, understanding of the series, then that is where the guidebooks come in. And it is stated in one of these guides that Yami is the most powerful Espada, at least in terms of raw power and Ryatsu. This means that Yami is more powerful than Segunda Etapa Ukiora, Noitora, Grimjow, and a bunch of these other characters that Yami said were trash compared to him. Hmm. And I mean, his number is zero, and it took the semi-combined efforts of Byakuya, Kuchiki, and Kenpachi f***ing Broly Zaraki of all people to take him down. <laughs> Skip forward a couple of years, this Byakuya that fought against Yami obviously got more powerful than Asnot, like, pulled up to Soul down. Society, yeah. and it was mm. like, hey bro, can I please have a crumb of that Bankai? And so he jacked it, and we do know that it is stated and implied in the series that in order for somebody to steal somebody's Bankai, then their spiritual pressure slash Ryatsu must be equal to, if not greater, than that of the users. So, too long didn't read, Asnot is at least equal to, if not more powerful, powerful than Abiyakia, mm -hmm. who is more powerful than what he was when he fought against Yami, okay. who is more powerful than Ukiora. Yeah, quite yeah, simple, a bit right? about the Ukiora In thing, this but okay. case, the battle is more so of a hypothetical if Ukiora did manage to survive the war and become more powerful alongside his other Espada. And if you think about it, his personality could have also changed somewhat. Because when he was dying, he was starting to get the idea about what emotions were mm. and what a what heart like really was. Ugh. 
Unlike the other Espada who gave up their high-speed regeneration for more power, Okiora is the only one who can regenerate at such high like, speeds really quick, and yeah. still be a worthy contender. He may not have any special gimmicks like Baragon or Zael, but he makes up for it by being overwhelmingly powerful, fast, and durable. His nature is to be calm and collected because even in the face of a hollow mask Getsuga Tensho from Ichigo, Okiora still surfaced unharmed. Mm -hmm. In their like, very first quote-unquote battle, Okiora made Ichigo look like a bigger clown than whoever designed the maps in Modern Warfare because honestly, those are pretty awful. But no, seriously, Okiora slaughtered Damn. Ichigo so badly that Orihime was unsure if she could even heal his wounds to begin with. Even after Ichigo had a really intense battle against Grimjow and got healed twice to become more powerful, Okiora was still not giving him any foothold nope. in the battle whatsoever. <laughs> it wasn't until Ichigo unleashed his hollow Holy mask form, yeah. in which Okiora was finally pushed into using his Murcielago form, but even then, he was still slapping Ichigo around like he was nothing. As you can see, Ukiora was way too strong for Ichigo, so Taita Kuba was like, screw it, I'm just gonna go ahead and give him like a, a new super form. hollow yeah. three form. And that is when super Ukiora was three. like, damn, like, I'm actually kind of f now. Although Ukiora was clearly outmatched by Bastolorde, his Seto Oscuras, which are many times more powerful than a regular Seto, were able to somewhat cancel out Bastolorde's energy attacks. You're not saying Bastolorde something. Bastolorde Ichigo obviously bodied him in the end, and even in the face of death, Ukiora was like, hey bro, whatever, it doesn't matter, my life doesn't matter, just go ahead and take care of the I'm job, just so you know? empty and Even die. without bracing himself, Ukiora managed to survive a point-blank settle from Vastal Lorde. As I mentioned previously, this is a hypothetical if Ukiora didn't end up dying, and as I said, his personality may have changed, but more so, what about his power? How can we really tell how powerful he would have been if he survived? Well, it is really simple, actually. All we have to do is skill from Grimjow. There we go. Okay, yeah, yeah. We know okay. that base Okiora was able to finesse a hollow mask Bankai Ichigo, who was more or less on equal footing with Grimjow, meaning that base Okiora is at least ten times more powerful than Grimjow. Okay. And he would be a thousand times more powerful with his two releases. It is revealed in the series that a Bankai so and then a how far was Grimjow? And then add those multiplications to on top to Ukiora? And we do know that yeah. a Bankai release can give you a multiplier of anywhere from 5 to 10 times to combat attributes like speed, power, or defense. This is further exemplified by when Lupi undergoes through his own resurrection and states that his attack power went up by 8 times. Hmm. Now, if you haven't seen my Grim Jowl video, which I did hella months back, I really recommend that you should because I go a lot more in depth on the scaling and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna give you a quickie here. When Grim Jowl and Ichigo reunited, they both commented that both of them got more powerful, mm -hmm. and Grim Jowl was like, "Hey, like we should fight," meaning that he was still really confident. <laughs> yeah, in that he could fight him. Much yeah, more powerful that says something. Ichigo. Grimjow didn't do too much in the war arc, but he was able to contend with and put the finishing blow on Asnot. Yeah, like he killed one of, one of those main Quincy's guards, who was more powerful than Asnot. Mm. Granted, it was a team effort to take this guy down, but I mean, even each go got bodied by Asken, so it wasn't like Grimjow was dealing with some weakling. Mm. But think about it: if Grimjow was able to contend with elite guard level characters, stronger than Asnot. Is many, many times more powerful than he was, then it is very clear to see that a hypothetical Ooh, Kiora yeah, in this war would, would have been yeah. elite guard level, if not much higher. Yeah. Meanwhile, Asnot showcased that he was not to be messed with as he was able to casually capture Byakuya's Bankai mm, and body him with big it. Deal, and big he deal. would have more than likely killed him right then and there if it wasn't for the damn fangirls. Yeah, he that would have been gets dead. Me a little bit pissed off because he should have honestly died right there. Mm -hmm. Asnot was also able to counter a lot of Rukia's abilities, including Absolute Zero. So yeah, this guy broke out of even that. Using his fear needles slash arrows, he is able to cause even veteran Shinigami like Byakuya to feel fear on an instinctual level. Using his Volstandig and manipulating the optic nerves of his opponents, as not right, this is interesting because would that actually affect Ukiora then? At him once, and even if they look away, if he's so hard, eyes, they'll still see the fear in their memories. 
So, Asnot wasn't really a character that depended on raw power, his abilities were more so based on psychological effects, mm. and this easily made him one of the most dangerous and powerful opponents out there in the war, and he would have more than likely defeated Rukia if it wasn't for Byakuya's intervention. Since you guys now get the general idea about how powerful these two are, who would actually win the battle though? Oh, Ukiora, the then. first scenario <laughs> would be if Ukiora was in base and was caught off guard by Asnots, although to be honest within the story itself, Asnots would more than likely not be tasked to defeat such an opponent, but this is where it gets interesting. Since Ukiora's skin is really durable because of his hierro, it would make it really hard for Asnot's needles to actually penetrate through, so in this case, it would more than likely force Asnot to turn into his full standing Tartarforas and try to get Ukiora to blast at him just once, so that his fear ability will come under what effect. What does the fear effect then work? Then again, Ukiora could literally just chat out and increase his spiritual pressure, because if you didn't know, in some cases, just by raising up your Ryatsu, you can negate the effects of abilities. For example, when Soifon was trying to use her Shikai against Aizen, but Aizen was literally like, my spiritual pressure, and because of that, her ability couldn't do jack against him. As I said, in this case, Ukiora would be off guard like he did showcase against Ichigo when he was trying to stop his Getsuga Tensho, but he couldn't, and he even said that he was caught off guard by it. So if Asnots did manage to put Ukiora under his ability, it would more than likely make him visualize like flashbacks to his battle with Vastal Lord Ichigo. It would reignite like an animalistic fight or flight sequence within him because, yeah, Ukiora is like a really cold and emotionless person, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that he is not susceptible to fear based on instinct. Okay. And I mean, he was more than likely on high alert when he's fighting some goddamn demon that was tearing his limbs apart and blasting him to smithereens. I suppose that's true, Under yeah. all of this commotion, then Asnot could maybe get a critical hit in, but then again, Ukiora's skin is just way too rough for him to actually do anything against. But hey, why not give Asnot a much better fighting chance with Byakuya, Senbon, Sakura, Kageyoshi? Oof. Within the lore, it is implied by Bambietta that once a stern ritter steals a Bankai, that they cannot use their full standing. But for this situation, let's just hmm. say that Asnot can use both because why the hell not? Okay, yeah, yeah, it's hypothetical. In the second <laughs> scenario, we would give Asnot Byakuya's Bankai, which would give him a much higher multiplier than with just a full standing alone. And although Asnot may not be able to use the full power of Simple Sakura, he still showcased to be proficient with it, meaning that with more practice he might have had a good idea about how to use it. Since Senbon Zakura is incredibly powerful, it would allow Asnot to pierce the skin of Basil Kiora, and if he catches him off guard, then he could maybe land a fatal blow on him, and if he does manage to get a couple of organs in, then he might have a good chance to win in that regard. Let's be real here though, even if we gave Asnot Byakuya's Bankai and his full standing, and he somehow becomes relative or comparable to Basil Kiora, what the hell is he gonna do against when, his first release? Yeah, much when he less releases, yeah. Dappa, which no chance. No chance if you're giving him those multipliers that you're basing the Grim Jow's growth from. Apart from the aforementioned scenario, there is really nothing stopping Ukiora from literally just speed blitzing yeah. and blasting Absolutely him. Yeah, absolutely annihilate him. Yeah, if you're giving him all that stats, then yeah, he's got that. Then and there. Once again, if this was during the Katakuda Town arc, Asnots would have been more powerful than any of the Espada to realistically do anything against. Overall, you guys kind of get the idea that if Ukiora did manage to survive his battle with Ichigo and got a lot of gains alongside the other Espada, he would have become too powerful for Asnots to defeat, yeah. and he would have definitely proven to be a challenge to even the top Bolt. Stern Ritter. Speaking of, would you guys like to see a video on that because I totally could. But yeah, I really hope so yeah, so if you had Asnot versus Ukiora versus Battle, that we saw, then Asnot's got it. If Ukiora stayed live and, and did yeah, what Grimjow did, then yeah. Soon, and yes, Godzilla is one of them. Stop bothering me. Peace out. By the way, guys, please be sure to check out my homie Clyde's Ukiora video. He went balls to yeah, my research. It is like a documentary. Uh, I'm going to put it in the description below uh, if you're interested. And yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks, hermanos. And they have done a video together, which is Byakia versus Kenpachi, which I will check out next. That's going to be an interesting one. 
I already think in my head though that Ken Patchy has got it if we're going off of Ken Patchy with his bank eye, but uh, we will wait until that video to see what Chuck and Clyde have to say on the matter. But until then, thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe if you haven't already. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you want to discuss in future videos. I'll see you guys. I'll see you guys next time.